Let's get right into it. Number 6. Depression versus Burnout At first glance, these two look identical. You're exhausted, unmotivated, emotionally flat, and fantasizing about disappearing into a blanket burrito indefinitely. So, naturally, people assume they're interchangeable. They are not. One is a medical condition. The other is capitalism eating your soul with a plastic fork. Depression doesn't care how good your life is on paper. You can have a stable job, supportive friends, and a plant that's still alive, and your brain will still whisper, nothing matters and you are tired of existing. It's persistent, internal, and doesn't magically improve when you take a vacation. You don't just feel tired. You feel heavy. Joy feels muted. Even things you used to love feel like chores you forgot to opt out of. Burnout, on the other hand, is situational. It's what happens when stress overstays its welcome and starts rearranging your furniture. You're emotionally drained because you've been giving more than you're getting for too long. Your motivation isn't gone, it's been overworked into early retirement. And here's the big clue. Burnout often improves when the stressor is removed. Change the job, the workload, the environment, or the expectations, and suddenly you can feel like a human again. Psychologically, depression is a disorder of mood regulation and reward processing. Burnout is a stress response collapse. One hijacks your internal chemistry. The other is your nervous system waving a tiny white flag and begging for rest. People confuse them because they feel similar on the surface. But burnout says, I'm exhausted by this. Depression says, I'm exhausted by everything, including myself. Basically, burnout needs boundaries and recovery. Depression needs treatment. And telling someone with depression to just take a break is like telling a broken leg to try yoga. Number 5. OCD versus being a perfectionist. Somewhere along the way, I like things tidy became I'm so OCD, which is unfortunate because actual OCD is not cute, quirky, or color-coded. Perfectionism is about standards. You like control. You like things done a certain way. Maybe you reorganize the spice rack or reread an email six times. That's personality. That's preference. OCD is about fear. Specifically, intrusive thoughts that your brain refuses to let go of, no matter how irrational they are. Obsessive-compulsive disorder traps you in a loop. First comes the obsession, an unwanted, distressing thought. What if I hurt someone? What if I didn't lock the door and something terrible happens? Then comes the compulsion, a behavior you feel forsetto do to reduce the anxiety. Checking, washing, repeating, counting, mentally reviewing every moment of your day like you're on trial in your own head. Here's the brutal part. The compulsions don't bring relief. They bring temporary quiet, followed by the thought coming back louder. It's like trying to satisfy a smoke alarm by fanning smoke at it. Your brain learns that anxiety equals danger, and the cycle deepens. Perfectionists want things to be right. People with OCD need things to be safe, even when logic says they already are. One is driven by preference. The other is driven by terror. Basically, OCD isn't about liking order. It's about your brain refusing to stop pressing the panic button over imaginary threats. Number 4. Autism versus Social Anxiety Picture two people standing in a crowded room. Both look uncomfortable. Both are quiet. Both are avoiding eye contact like it's radioactive. From the outside, they look the same. Internally, completely different universes. Social anxiety is fear-based. You're worried about judgment, embarrassment, rejection, or humiliation. Your brain is running worst-case scenarios like a low-budget horror movie marathon. What if I say something stupid? What if they hate me? What if everyone notices my hands shaking? You understand the social rules. You're just terrified of messing them up. Autism, on the other hand, isn't fear, it's processing. Social cues don't come naturally. Tone, facial expressions, sarcasm, and unwritten rules feel like a secret language everyone else learned at birth, and you somehow missed the memo. You're not anxious because you're afraid of being judged. You're overwhelmed because your brain is trying to decode 400 signals at once while also managing noise, lights, textures, and human proximity. Social anxiety says, they're judging me. Autism says, I don't understand what's happening, and my senses are under attack. One is emotional threat perception. The other is neurological difference in information processing. People confuse them because autistic people can develop social anxiety from repeated negative social experiences. If you grow up constantly misunderstood, corrected, or punished for being different, your brain learns fear. But they're still separate conditions, with different roots. Basically, social anxiety is your mind afraid of people. 
autism is your brain speaking a different social language. Number 3. Dementia versus Alzheimer's disease. Here's one that medicine students still mess up. Alzheimer's is a type of dementia, but not all dementia is Alzheimer's. Saying they're the same thing is like saying every dog is a golden retriever. Dementia is an umbrella term. It means cognitive decline severe enough to interfere with daily life. Memory loss, confusion, impaired reasoning, personality changes, difficulty speaking, all of that falls under dementia. It describes symptoms, not a cause. Alzheimer's disease is a specific neurological disease that causes dementia. It's driven by physical changes in the brain plaque buildup, neuron damage, and disrupted communication between brain cells. It's the most common cause of dementia, which is why people treat the words like synonyms. Other dementias exist too. Vascular dementia from strokes, Lewy body dementia, frontotemporal dementia, different causes, different patterns, same general outcome cognitive decline. People confuse them because Alzheimer's dominates public awareness. It's the face of dementia in movies, media, and fundraising campaigns. So the language collapsed into one label. Basically, dementia is the category. Alzheimer's is one member of that category. One is the headline. The other is the article underneath it. Your brain doesn't get Alzheimer's. It develops dementia symptoms from a disease, and Alzheimer's is just one of the possible villains. Number 2. Psychopathy versus sociopathy. Pop culture treats these like interchangeable words for scary person who doesn't blink. In reality, they're related concepts with different developmental flavors, and neither automatically means serial killer. Psychopathy is generally understood as more innate. It's associated with brain differences in emotional processing, especially empathy, fear, and impulse control. Psychopaths tend to be calm under pressure, emotionally shallow, and charming in a very unsettling, salesman who never blinks way. They don't feel guilt the way most people do. Rules aren't moral guidelines, they're just obstacles. Sociopathy is thought to be more shaped by environment. Trauma, neglect, unstable upbringing, these can wire a person to distrust others, disregard norms, and act impulsively. Sociopaths are more reactive, more emotionally volatile, and more likely to form attachments, even if those attachments are messy or unhealthy. Both fall under the umbrella of antisocial personality disorder in modern diagnostics, which is where confusion explodes, but the distinction helps explain behavior patterns. Psychopathy is cold and calculated. Sociopathy is chaotic and hot-blooded. Neither guarantees violence. Most people with these traits aren't criminals. They're just difficult. They can function in society, especially in systems that reward charm, risk-taking, and emotional detachment, which is a deeply comforting thought obviously. Basically, psychopathy is emotional detachment on factory settings. Sociopathy is emotional detachment learned the hard way. Number 1. Schizophrenia versus Multiple Personality Disorder. Thanks, movies. Truly, no condition has been more aggressively misunderstood than schizophrenia. Schizophrenia is not having multiple personalities. It is a disorder involving psychosis, a break from reality. Hallucinations, delusions, disorganized thinking. Your brain misinterprets reality and then confidently insists it's correct. You might hear voices, you might believe things that are objectively false. And trying to argue someone out of a delusion is like trying to convince a dream that it's imaginary. Multiple personality disorder, now called dissociative identity disorder, is something else entirely. It's a trauma-based dissociative condition where different identity states form to cope with overwhelming experiences, usually in early childhood. There aren't hallucinations or delusions in the same way. There's fragmentation of identity, memory gaps, and internal separation. People mix them up because both sound dramatic, confusing, and hard to understand. Media didn't help. It mashed them together into a single scary trope and called it a day. Schizophrenia fractures perception. DID fractures identity. One alters how you experience reality. The other alters how you experience yourself. Basically, Schizophrenia isn't many people in one body. It's one mind trying to navigate a reality that won't stay still. That's all for today. I'll be making similar videos in the future. Subscribe to see them.